just so you know, an exclusive version of this coming on the Patreon today. Today. There's a lot of things people didn't know. But we're going to touch on that on the Patreon because it goes a little deep. Now, as far as everything else is concerned, I want to say welcome. Don't forget to hit the like button coming through the door. It's your boy Carcino. As we're ready to get to it. I don't know if notifications went out. I didn't get one. Now, Woo! man, it's hot and humid. Damn, spider web. Okay, I gotta water the grass. aren't correct right now with all the spamming that's going on due to the academics crap they've been coming out to my page I did one video on Tommy then he started pixelating my damn YouTube now Let's get into it. Isaiah Lord Thomas the third. The man came out and said it clear as day. He said, if I didn't get fired by the Indiana Pacers, if he didn't get fired, by the paces he's still and they would have won a championship no problems Isaiah said they would have won a championship And not only that, he stated, the malice in the palace wouldn't have happened had he still been coached. One, because he said Detroit wouldn't have done that to me. The Piston fans wouldn't have done that. First off, Isaiah Thomas is right. And I'm going to tell you where he's really right at. First, had Ron Artest go to the locker room. Oh, you missed a great stream yard yesterday, T.
But Isaiah would have had Isaiah would have had Ron Artest go to the locker room. See, people don't realize, I guess they saw a little bit of it in that documentary, but Jermaine O'Neal was the one with the biggest temper. He was the biggest hothead on the team. So if he was the biggest hothead on the team, Ron Artest wasn't. Ron Artest was quiet. He rarely said anything. The biggest person with the biggest temper on the team was Jermaine O'Neal. People forget that. Now, here's the other part where people forget. It would have never started. That's what, see, y'all don't understand what Isaiah does. See, and this is what I'm going to talk about on the documentary, about the documentary, when we get to the Patreon version. Into all the politics of this, because this BS thing was set up, where they made it look like Rick Carlisle built the damn team. They made it look like Rick Carlisle did all of this and they cut Isaiah out of all, the whole process when they were talking about the structuring of this team. Ron Artest and Jermaine O'Neal were not picked by Rick Carlisle. That team was built by Isaiah Thomas. Donnie Walsh didn't pick them. Isaiah Thomas brought that team into prominence to where they were NBA championship ready. Young team ready to win an NBA title. The best team in the East. And he did that in three years. Built it from scratch. And this one Indian female writer for the NBA who wrote this powder puff piece to kiss Larry Bird's ass when Larry Bird ain't did jack shit in the NBA since he stopped playing from Boston. So they need to stop that Larry Bird crap. Bird ain't did shit in this NBA since he won that title in 87 or 86. All he did was milk the damn, all he did was milk the Indiana Pacers for money. Bird was no coach. That's what I'm saying. Isaiah would have sent Ron Artest. He would have sent him to the locker room. Every time there was an incident and Jermaine O'Neal would go, you know who would get ejected? Isaiah Thomas. They would throw Zeke out with him because he'll argue with his players. Jermaine O'Neal would lose it. Isaiah would lose it right with him, and they'll both be gone. Come on, O'Neal, let's go. They would get thrown out of games right along with him. That's how they roll. <laughs> they roll just like that. If O'Neal go, okay, screw it. He gone, we all gone. The documentary was some some airbrush bull it. Nope, Isaiah Thomas' ability to turn teams around. Indiana was never going to let Isaiah Thomas be Isaiah Thomas. Until he won an NBA championship. 
He was the best thing for the organization. See, here's the thing. Larry Bird came there and joined the Indiana Pacers to be the head coach. Larry Bird was coached for what, two years? He was like two, three years. He brought Rick Carlisle, his former Boston Celtic teammate and best friend, to be his assistant coach. Rick Carlisle coached the damn team. Larry Bird was just there. He was the face. And they put Larry Bird in the NBA Finals to have Bird Magic War with the Pacers and the Lakers. And tried to promote this as Bird versus Magic. And this is a competition. And it's like, Larry Bird's like, I don't know how he thinks we're competing. Magic, I'm sitting in the stands. <laughs> He's like, whatever. If he thinks it's competition, it's competition. See, Larry wasn't going along with the BS. But that's what the NBA wanted to do. But of course, Bird was one of the greatest players of all time. I had him, uh, I got him ranked above Michael Jordan. Bird was a unique talent. And with his size, shooting ability, passing, rebounding, he knew the game was second nature to him. The only thing stopped Larry Bird was his own body breaking down. No, but see, here's the thing. What happened to Isaiah was worse than what happened to... What happened to Isaiah Thomas was worse than what happened to Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson gets his flowers. Nobody give Isaiah Thomas his flowers. They don't speak on Mark Jackson in a negative light. Everybody cheers for Mark. Everybody seemingly knows Mark Jackson got screwed out of the job and Kerr just basically won with his talent. But see, Carlisle didn't win with his talent. That's the only problem. That's the main difference in this situation. The Indiana Pacers were number one in Michael Jordan's last season. They were number one in the NBA. They had failed all the way down and end up losing in the playoffs. And the reason they lost in the playoffs was because the guys had just gotten there. It was a big melee and all this stuff. I'm going to deal with it in the Patreon because a lot of it is some lighter backdoor stuff that was taking place. Donnie, Donnie Walsh was stepping down. Isaiah was going to be president he was going to be a head coach and general manager of the was already doing the job anyway was supposed to get that but we're down the road of that in a minute Larry Bird came in to replace Donnie and the first thing he did was fire Isaiah Thomas and bring in his buddy Rick Carlisle and the dirtiest move ever and it on the day of, I believe, the Bartman game in the baseball playoff series. So nobody really got a chance to focus on what really happened there. That was, it was, it would have been the biggest news of the day if it wasn't for Steve Bartman and that play with the Chicago Cubs. That thing would have been every play. The Bartman play happened, and nobody in the world thought about what happened over there in Indiana in that press conference. It was 
terrific. Thank you, Isaiah Thomas, for, for the team. And this wasn't about no. See what I'm saying? This is why I got to do this on Patreon. What I tell you, when you start getting into the room, they do it every single time. Sabotage, sabotage, sabotage. Every time. It makes no sense. None. Oh, uh, no. That's wrong. Burr was the coach first, and he quit after the NBA Finals. And what this Indian woman did who wrote this slanderous article on Isaiah Thomas to try to promote Larry Bird and kiss his butt, what that slanderous woman did to try to ruin his name and everything else as he don't have enough problems or things on his plate She's going to write and try to make it look as if the team was nothing. And then when Rick Carlisle got there, Rick was a better coach. And Rick started turning the team around once they got there. No, the team was already coming into their own. They were number one in the, in the Eastern Conference in Isaiah's last season. And then in the, towards the end, the second half of the season, they started to fall. Now, Indiana had, Isaiah made a trade that brought, he got rid of Jalen Rose and all these players and brought in Ron Artest, Brad Miller in one deal. Then he got Jermaine O'Neal from Portland and got him on the team. Because Isaiah knows talent when he sees it. Not too many people can scout talent. He can. A lot of y'all don't know Isaiah Thomas scouted Chris Paul. A lot of players in this league, he scouted for other teams. When Chris Paul was in high school, Isaiah told him, he said, that's your next Jason kid. He said, that's your next Jason kid. So, but this kid got a jump shot. This kid can shoot. Watch him. He's a true natural point guard. Isaiah was, wished they, they was in position to get him, but he knew Chris Paul would be gone. A lot of people didn't know that. Now, this is why I'm gonna have to do this on the Patreon because there's a lot of things here that went on that that was in the realm of sabotage of Isaiah because they knew Larry was taking over and he wanted to correct what Donnie did earlier and let Isaiah take the job. I mean, let his man take the job. So, Rick Carlisle gets there, right? 
the first year the Pacers win 61 games. They're the favorites to win the championship that year. The Detroit Pistons won favor to do nothing. And the Pistons beat them. Reggie Miller got blocked by Tayshawn Prince. And that turned around that series. And the Pistons beat them in six. Shocking upset. They won 61 games. They were 61 and 41. Now, yep. So after this, Rick Carlisle and the Pacers are coming back. They're the favorites once again. Even though the Pistons won the championship, beat the Lakers, the Indiana Pacers are still the favorites to win the NBA championship. They still was like the best team. Then they trade Al Harrington, and they got Captain Jack, and that was the missing piece they needed. Captain Jack is a good role player. He can hit the threes where Big Al couldn't. He can hit the baseline corner three from the corner. Big moments of the game. He can come in and hit a couple shots. He's going to give you his. That's what Jack could do. They couldn't do that. None of the other ones could do it. So to top it all off, after all of this was accomplished, and they went through this process, the malice in the palace happened, and people don't realize that happened with only 10 games played. It was like nine, 10 games in the season. People act like the Pacers were so much better than the Pistons that year. Like this is the year we got them. Dog, it's like the 10th game in the season. Like what is everybody talking about? It's the 10th game in the damn season. The, the fight happened in November. Basketball starts in November. My thing is, the narrative of the malice in the palace, they make it seem like the Indiana Pacers were dominating the league, and here they come, they finna play the Pistons to see it's the 10th game in the season. The Pacers were looking good that year. They, they were 7-2. They were going to be in, in the playoffs probably going up against the Pistons to see who was going to go to the NBA Finals. I agree with that. 
But the strongest team in the East who was starting to get stronger were the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls were starting to come into prominence. They were getting back up there. With Gordon, Ben Gordon, uh, huh, what's his name? The guy from Kansas at the point, Kirk Heinrich, Captain Kirk. That was their backcourt. The Bulls back then was winning some games. And this is before D. Rose. So the Bulls was on the come up. But they were never going to beat the Pistons. And now you got to worry about, here come LeBron James now. LeBron James is starting to come up. So to say the Indiana Pacers was going to win, they had their window, but it was blown. Steven Jackson was not there because of Isaiah Thomas. That's an Indiana Pacer, Rick Carroll, and them decision. Isaiah was not responsible for bringing Captain Jack over, but it was a great addition to the team. So the only contribution was bringing over Captain Jack. But what Rick Carlisle couldn't do, because you got another hothead in Tinsley. You got a big melting pot full of hot personalities. Everybody is temperamental and can snap at any time and it can go left. As we've all found out with fingers and everybody else. <laughs> None of this would have happened probably under Isaiah Thomas's watch. Because nobody in there is crazier than Isaiah Thomas. And Isaiah Thomas would go, well, you're going to see Zeke. And when you meet Zeke, you were going to be like, oh, okay, we're going to fall in line. <laughs> Captain Jack wouldn't have got out of control. He would have stayed in control. Isaiah Thomas would have been in the stands before it went anything left. He would have been up in that stands grabbing Ron Artest. The Malice in the Palace wouldn't have went down with Zeke. He'd have took full control of Ron. He'd have known right away, I got to grab Ron out of all this. No matter how cool he is, he'd have grabbed Ron and said, Ron, go to the locker room. Ron, I got this. Game over. We got it. Go on to the locker room. I'm going to handle this. All right, look. Just throw him out. He gone. All right? Do whatever you want. <laughs> Ron's going back to the locker room. This thing's over. Let's get this game over with. They can shoot the free throws. It's all done. Zeke would have took control. Rick Carlisle doesn't know how to take control. At that time, he couldn't. He couldn't handle that, that, those personalities. He had no control over them. And it was present. Reggie Miller had more authority on the court of trying to get authority. Uh, but I'm glad they pointed out some facts that Reggie pointed out in the documentary that I think people needed to hear. They didn't listen to Reggie Miller. They didn't give a damn what Reggie said. None of them gave a damn about Reggie Miller. And it was Reggie's last year. And they screwed up Reggie's last year. Now they feel like dog it and looking back on it like man Reggie should have got his ring man we screwed that up we blew it because the next following year after the malice in the palace they were predicted again <laughs> to win the NBA title they did it they put them as the number one team in the NBA to look forward to they got Larry Bird up there with Ron Artest Jermaine O'Neal Ron didn't want to come back. Ron just wanted to get out of there. He didn't want to be on the team no more. And the, and they couldn't understand. They were like, Ron, all that stuff's over with. 
They're going to ask some questions, but it's done. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Or Mick. It was done. It was over with. It was done. They were like, look, this whole thing's over. This malice in the palace crap, it's all over. Like, it's over. Like, don't even, like, worry about it no more. It's over. Just move on. They couldn't move on. Nobody could. The media was talking about it. He couldn't take it. Ron Artest just was out of there. They couldn't control Ron. But if Isaiah Thomas was there, Isaiah would have control. But when you have a guy who just knows X and O's, it's a little different. But Isaiah Thomas built that team from the ground up. And he left the whole team that they had that went to that NBA Finals was depleted. And that's what I want that Indian lady to know who wrote that slanderous article on Isaiah Thomas. I want her to know this. You wrote that article in a slant for Larry Bird to promote him. Well, here's the thing. They depleted that team, lady. All the veterans on there that shouldn't have been, like Chris Mullen, uh, Rick Smith, he retired. Larry Bird left. After that year, that whole team was depleted. Aaron McKee, all those guys were gone. They built the team from the ground up the next year. And they finished 500 and made the playoffs. They played Allen Iverson in the first year. They played Allen Iverson in the 76ers and Reggie Miller hit those threes to win the game one and they went up one zip. And I felt at that time that was a travesty to do to Reggie Miller to start basically a rebuild near the end of his career. Jalen Rose stayed, and they eventually traded Jalen Rose because Jalen Rose just wasn't, he wasn't what they needed. And Isaiah knew, okay, I got to, I got to move Jalen Rose. Even though Jalen Rose is a huge Detroit Piston fan, this is about basketball. He had to go. He had to go. And that brought in Ron Artest and Brad Miller, another underrated player that the Chicago Bulls had. And they just was too stupid. The Bulls was ready to get rid of Brad Miller. That's a you had a center like Brad Miller who could play the game, who was not soft. He was tough. Get your rebounds, could pass. Brad Miller was incredible. And then Ron Artest was this strong defender, man. He could guard you, post. I mean, he was just physically strong, endless with energy, just could go. And he was all offensive. Ron couldn't dribble, but you couldn't really steal the ball from him. And he could score. Absolutely he was.
LeBron Artest a better basketball player than LeBron? Uh, yeah, I would say that. He had a, he his impact on the game was a lot greater than LeBron. LeBron his impact on the game is like in the front office and <laughs> and trading players away and all that stuff. But I can't play and move him, move him to Dallas. Yep, move him to Dallas. Oh, Dennis Schroeder think he going to the Knicks? No, nah, he ain't going there. I talked to Leon Rose. Nah, they going in another direction. Man, he going to be playing in Alaska. Well, Ron played defense. He was a defensive player first, offensive person second. But Ron Artest was putting up points. He wasn't somebody who wasn't scoring. He was rebounding. He was shut down your best defender. Or give them the toughest night of their life. And he's hitting big shots to win NBA championships. So we knew what Ron Artest was, you know. He went from being the most hated player in the league. He was a hothead. They wrote all negative about him until he became a Laker. Once he was a Laker, it was nothing but puff pizzas about Ron. They love Ron Artest. Now they knew he was a great defender. So, yeah, I'll put Ron Artest above LeBron. And he, yeah. It's close. I wouldn't say it's close. What did... What cut LeBron... Okay, here's... You think it's close, right? What has LeBron James done that he's one of the best in the world at? Shooting the ball, layups, passing. Nothing. When you say Ron Artest, you say he's probably one of the best defenders in the NBA in the past 20 years. Probably since Dennis Rodman. They rank him as like one of the best defenders of all time. Man that broke Michael Jordan's ribs. <laughs> So, Ron was averaging at one point 24, 6, 
and he grabbed like over 10 rebounds. He was guarding the best players every night. LeBron does not do that at all. He doesn't guard the best players. And he doesn't shut anybody down. Oh, we're going to have another movie chat discussion um, either tomorrow, think of more tomorrow night. We're going to do a stream yard for the movies. Damn, I knew this thing was going to be like this. All y'all would fail the Tupac trivia, so. They gonna find me sleep on the side of the road over here, dealing with all this traffic. Oh, it's going down today. Just wait and see. Cause I'm gonna do a Patreon version of this. The Patreon version is a little bit more detailed with a lot of more things going on behind the scenes that you didn't know. That led to this whole Isaiah Thomas saying what he's saying right now about he been trying to just throw darts at Larry Bird and what he did because Bird did some dirty ish because Larry was mad that they didn't hire Rick Carlisle from the beginning and Isaiah came in there and got the job. The thing is Isaiah Thomas was president. Well, we'll say it. we'll save all that for the Patreon. <laughs> we'll save it. Well, here's the thing. ESPN has lost a lot of money. So I might as well tell y'all, I'll tell y'all in advance now. Uh, ESPN in the past four years have lost like almost $100 million. A lot of the sponsorships are not paying ESPN anymore like they normally did because ESPN has lost a lot of licenses. They tried to extort a lot of people like Major League Baseball uh, Major League Baseball years ago said, you know what, screw y'all, y'all, y'all playing too many games, we gotta, we coming out with MLB.com, so the Major League Baseball put out their own network for sports, so that's, they were like, so we really don't need you guys, and we're not gonna pay that kind of money, so Major League Baseball was the first ones to step up really to ESPN, so then ESPN went from a ball standpoint to a I gotta kiss everybody's ass standpoint because now other stations and streaming platforms have gotten ahead of them. So ESPN was laughing when everybody came out with streaming. Streaming! Ha <laughs> ha! YouTube! They would rather listen to a guy in a chair who they don't know? Yep. <laughs> yep. We got original programming! And then no one was watching that shit. So they got real upset with it. And they had this ESPN Plus that wasn't doing anything. Then they came out with... They, they, they didn't know what to do. They tried to jump in it late. They put ESPN Plus out without any plan. And they think just because of the name, ESPN, people just gonna come running. 
So they paid Kobe Bryant all this money to just talk about games and break them down. Kobe Bryant's gonna break down this. Details with Kobe Bryant. They got Kobe to do details and paid him all that money. Then they were like, man, this is not really taking off. Like, the average casual fan don't care about the actual game and what the play was doing and how this player got open. They don't care. They don't want to do the film work in X and O's. They don't like that. So now they, that, that jumped the shark. And now they don't care anymore. Oh, well, what do you do now? No, I mean, what I mean that he gets his flowers. He's got a job immediately after that that pays him handsomely well. He don't even have to leave that booth. He don't have no pressures, and they never write bad about Mark Jackson, ever. They talk about him in high regards. Isaiah Thomas has accomplished way more than Mark Jackson and definitely was a better basketball player, but is written about in the most horrible light ever only because he was the rival to Michael Jordan Larry and Magic the three that they love so much thank you guys for the super chat for those who donated to the page. I appreciate all the love and support. Now, man, I've been trying to just keep myself busy. Is that the cops and why are they back here? That's the one cool one. <laughs> he went back there to get some shade and chill. Nah, he ain't the one guy, the new guy, he's the hyperactive guy. There's always the new guy. I'm like, dude, what do you feel like you gotta be all hyperactive for? That was two nights ago. I'm like, dude, this is like really extra. He was harassing these damn teenagers. I'm like, look, I'm a grown man. Ain't your business. I'm like, I'm like, it's not my business. I know I don't live in the town no more, but let me show you my power. Hey. Oh, hey. Yeah. Really? What's going on? This man's being a little extra. Why? What'd he do? I mean, y'all need to talk to him. <laughs> and then they, they inform him, don't bother Sino. And Sino said, you being extra. Oh, he's the new guy. We're trying to show him the ropes. I'm like, well, somebody need to show him. Because he ain't learning. Oh, 
Oh yeah, it's going down. But wait till you hear the truth behind this whole thing that led to the malice in the palace. The truth behind why Isaiah ain't, wasn't there in Indiana. The whole fallout. Everything that hasn't been told. Because it hasn't. It really hasn't been told. And it's a lot of propaganda, buddy. But we'll get there. I'm out. I've arrived at my In this town? Shoot, I got juice. I know the mayor. <laughs> the mayor is a dirty piece of crap, man. He gave his wife a uh, STD. Yeah. <laughs> From this rat that was up in there. Remember I made that song? Uh... Oh, man, what did she have? Chlamydia Girl. Remember I made that song? Chlamydia Girl. You came and you changed my world. Chlamydia Girl. The mayor of the city slept with Chlamydia Girl. Was banging her out. And so I know the mayor of this town. So that's why they can't, they can't deal with me. They see me. They's like, see no run, Antioch. <laughs> so I know the mayor I know the mayor's father the mayor's father on that spot I always go to see I go above the cops <laughs> cause the mayor gonna tell them what to do and I know what the mayor has done <laughs> I mean, his wife know too when she all of a sudden gets an STD and she ain't been outside. So Sino got a lot of power when he in the town. <laughs> But with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Spider see though. <laughs> yeah, y'all remember y'all remember that story? The hood story I did live about Chlamydia Girl? Chlamydia Girl. She came and she changed my world. Just like in the movies, Chlamydia Girl. <laughs> Many a girl. <laughs> yep, chlamydia girl. I was like, man, she was on her way. She was perfect. She just had chlamydia. <laughs> and I wasn't sticking around to find out was it was she was she over it or was it gone? <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. No wait. That's all I needed to hear. Well, she gave my boy chlamydia. I was, that's all I needed to hear. I'm out. <laughs> now, that that could have been a vicious rumor, but when three to four other people say the same thing, can't say it's a rumor no more. Now it's become fact. <laughs> it's become canon. Everybody warned me, like, hey, dude, like, y'all having a great time, right? And then it was the mayor, the mayor of the town. <laughs> the mayor. I like the mayor. Oh, me and the mayor got off to a, a, a rough start with Jack, because I didn't know he was the mayor. You wouldn't know. He don't look like the mayor. He walks in, right? And he was yelling at his pop, so I'm like, hey, hey. Cause you know, I know his dad. So he was, walks me. 
listen, we're having a family dispute. Give me the political rundown. You know, I'm like, dude, what you talking about? I'm probably more family here than you. Who are you? And he's like, oh, this is my other son. I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, he's the mayor. The mayor? Like, the mayor of this town. This is him. Like, blew my mind. But since then, we've gotten cool. And now I know that the mayor is dirty as the South. It's like, hey, you dirty as the South. That's all it is. It's just politics. That's your business. I wish I wish all the voters were like you. I'm like, hey, man, I don't live in this town. <laughs> yep. Oh, cave from the cave's the next coming. We already on our way. It's going to be the K. You see what he doing in the summer league. He finna do that to the entire NBA. You heard what K said. He's like, I want Giannis. I want KD. I want them all. I want them to guard me. I want Kawhi Leonard. I want I want it. I can't wait. He want to give it to them. I want to see if they can stop. Yeah. See, that's a real player. What did MG what did MGK do? Are you talking about back then or he did something new? Oh, he had to give it to Jalen Green. <laughs> you saw what he gave to Jalen Green. Uh, yeah, I have a Pepsi. Thank you. 